Now, I know that some of you like what is called creative chaos. You have a bunch of files and folders scattered on your desktop. And I think that's not the best way if you're going to get onto your most productive self this year. And so I believe that we should do something about it. But even if you get everything organized, I'd still recommend my favorite search app and it's called Everything. And guess what? That's the first tip already. So yeah, let's jump onto the PC and I'll show you what everything can do. Okay, jumping onto the desktop, everything is down here. Okay, when I talk about everything, I'm talking about everything, the app, not everything as in everything. I know you, you get it. Let me give you an example. The other day, I wanted to edit the hosts file, you know, for some reason. There's a file, a system file called hosts that, you know, you can use it to block a certain website, for example. And once I type hosts in everything, you can see how fast it is in locating that file. And so this is the hosts file down here. As you can see, it's located in C, Windows, System32, Drivers, etc. And whatever other file you'd want to search, Kitale, for example, you can see how quick it is at bringing it out of the bowels of your PC. I like it. So yeah, first tip get a good search app. The second thing you need to do is to define your root folder or rather your main folder where everything will go. Now, when you install Windows, there's these default folders that get installed. Even when you buy a new PC, you'll get these pictures, music, videos, and you may be tempted to use them to store your pictures, music, downloads, and what have you. My preferred method is you create new partitions that you'll be using rather than just throwing your photos and your videos into those predefined folders. You could just use the built-in disk management software and uh, here it is. Check out this example. On my machine, I have this disk 2, which is basically the SSD. You can see there's a partition 251 GBs that contains Windows, the system files. There's another partition here called Fast Data and that's where I throw in the videos after I've recorded them and I edit off this partition. And as you can see, I know that the Windows files do not get touched. I do not add anything else. I let Windows grow on its own in its own partition called Windows here. And everything else that I do on this SSD that is editing goes on to this other partition. As you can see, I have other drives over here. My photos, videos and so on go on to one drive and my schoolwork and such other things go on to the other drive. Partitioning is as easy as just coming over here, shrinking this volume. You see, Windows will tell you how much space you can shrink it with, let's say 15 GBs. And once you click shrink, you'll have some empty 15 GBs that you can use to create a new partition. And to create a new partition, you simply just click on the empty space and create a new partition. So once you have your new partition, you can have your Windows files on their own and the other files, the rest of the files go into that new partition. There's other partitioning software that you can use that are more intuitive and offer more features like mini tool, partition manager, and several others, most of them are not free, but the free versions usually have enough of what you need so you can try them out. Now, number three, after you've defined your root partitions or your main partition, or basically that's like your cabinet, you know, you need to now give it some drawers where you will arrange your stuff in. And those drawers are files and folders. You can decide to make a structure that is based on your projects, assuming you are a photographer, for example, and every trip you go to take photos is like a project. You can have a project-based structure. Another system you could use is a client-based system in which assuming you are like an engineer with several clients, you can have a folder for each client. Another way you could arrange your files is a file type-based folder structure in which you have files of the same type going into a certain folder. This is really what Windows comes shipped with. It's basically a file type based folder structure. So whatever structure you decide to choose at the end of the day, the important thing is to get organized. You could even still have a combination of these structures. An example is let's assume you are an architect and you have clients. Each client has a maybe sitemap, which could be probably a PDF. There's photos of the project, which are maybe JPEGs. So at the top level, you could have a client-based structure in which each folder belongs to a certain client, but in each folder, you could have a file-type-based structure, for example. So you could combine all these structures 
just to get organized. But we still know that there's usually these malignant files that you're not sure whether you want to have them in this folder or in that folder. Or sometimes there are some similar files that are reused in several projects. In such a case, apart from your structured folders, you could have a general folder which, you know, you again could organize it somehow and this is where my third knit app comes in i like it very much it's a free app called post Hest. and uh, let's jump right here and look at post Hest. as you can see it's just a simple program what it does is if you do repetitive work an example is in my case i make these youtube videos and really it's basically a repetition so i know that every video will have a folder for the footage for the audio for the music so instead of creating those folders every time I'm shooting a new video, I just use post -hest and I've defined templates in post -hest. Let's take a look at my video template. As you can see here, Dickens video template. post -hest also comes with some other templates you can customize. For my case, as you can see, I have this folder structure. There's assets here in which I have some After Effects files and random things might go in here. Then there's an audio folder in which music, sound effects, and voiceovers go in. There's an exports folder in which after finished editing and exported the video, this is where it lands. So yeah, every time I start a new video project, for instance, the next video is, and you guys should subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you do not miss this next video. It's going to be awesome. It will be about my failures and rejections. So yeah, that's going to be the next one. So don't miss it. Subscribe, subscribe. And so far, if you think you like this video, please hit that like button. It helps YouTube know that this is not a crappy video. So it will help other people also benefit. Like the video, please. Thank you. So I come over here, type the name of the video. Uh, post test will automatically give it a number and a date. So once I click create project, you can see it's already created all those folders in this failures and rejection main folder. As you can see, assets, audio, exports, and so on have their folders just like we defined in the template. So the next time I'll be creating another project, I'll just go over there, type the name, and post test does the rest. It's such a nice app. You guys should be using it if you're into this kind of work, which is kind of repetitive. The next tip for organizing your PC would be to remove duplicates. If you've never removed your duplicates, you'll be surprised how many duplicate files you have, duplicate folders you have, and sometimes it just creates a lot of junk that is uninspiring. A program I'd recommend is called Anti-Twin. It's easy, it's simple, it's free. So all you need to do is to just specify a folder from which you want the duplicates to be found you could even let it search the whole drive for example and just click you know search for duplicate files and anti twin will run around look for the duplicate files and you can delete them next you guys should get into the habit of backing up your files they say that one is none and two is one so yeah if you have one copy of a file you're as good as having no file at all if you have Two copies, you're as good as having one. Especially for the important files like your graduation photos, for example. You could use any of the freely available cloud services to back up your files. There's Dropbox, there's Google Drive, there's OneDrive. Though they offer about 2 to 5 GBs of space, they could still be a savior if you have very important files that you need to have access to that you don't want to lose. And finally, you've made it to the bonus tips. The first tip, just skip the desktop. Just don't get into the habit of, you know, scattering everything on the desktop. Let everything be filed away in its specific folder as soon as the file is generated from whatever source. It's always inspiring. I find it to elevate my productivity to just have a clean desktop with a simple background with just a clean slate to start your day with, you know. Number two, the downloads folder. That's another malignant folder that you need to take care of. I know it's always difficult to send files to the exact folder you'd like them to live in every time you download them. So yeah, I allow my files to just come into the download folder as you can see over here. Interestingly, a lot of files usually you just download for one off use and after that you can delete them off. So you can just visit your downloads folder once in a while see what files you need to keep and take them to their respective folders and delete what you don't need. And lastly, and this is probably a more important tip than the rest, 
all this organization is a matter of discipline. You just need to keep it going. You could tweak how you do it and uh, use different programs or use different timings or use different folder structures. Just do what works for you. But at the end of it all, what you need is to keep at it, you know, just make it a habit to get your PC, get your desktop organized. That is it for today. I hope you guys have benefited from this video. I'll see you in the next productivity and digital life video. As always, no pressure.